Good morning, team. It is Tuesday, May 11th, and we thank you for joining us. I'm Amy Kaur, and I'm joined by Kevin Van Ack, and we are once again live out of the Goose Island office. So make sure to grab your cup of coffee, your tea, your power smoothie, maybe your lemon water. We've got a great episode this morning. So let's jump into Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Yes. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Grab your coffee or your favorite beverage. We're going to get started with Hot Tip Tuesday. Amy and Kevin are getting organized so that you know what to expect with coffee. So once a month, we're going to have something called Hot Tip Tuesday. That's going to be a real potpourri of hot tips that we've come up with that are quick and easy that you can then implement into your business. One other time a month, we're going to be doing a hot topic. This is where we do discuss in depth a topic that's really timely based on what's happening in the market, in our lives, in our business, the industry in general. And then we are also twice a month going to be doing agent interviews. And that's going to be a time where we learn from whether it's top producers or those that are newer to the business, the best actions we can take, what's happening out there so that we can learn from each other and implement those things into our business. So for today, let's get started with Hot Tip Tuesday. I love it, Kevin. And yes, I love that we are getting organized. And so it is May 11th. Who cares if it's the middle of the year and all of a sudden we decide I need to take a look at my business and what I've got going on and get myself a little bit more settled for what is going to be the second half of the year. So the first thing I want to talk about is time blocking. It has been a crazy market from January 1. I would say all of us out there are running fast and it's a great feeling in some sense. And then it's not such a great feeling in another, right? We've got a lot of clients out there that we're servicing, but sometimes we are being reactionary instead of really taking the time to take a look at our days and weeks and making sure we're doing all the right things we should to service our clients now, but continue to make sure that we're prospecting and doing things to lay the groundwork for when the market does slow up a little bit and we need to make sure that we still have momentum with clientele that are down the road. So what we'd love to encourage you to think about is time blocking. That's right, it's pretty basic, but what we want you to take a look at is take a look at your calendar, right? Make sure you can find one or maybe even two times throughout the week where you can block your time to focus on working on your business business, not just in your business, right? You've got all of those inspections, you've got showings, you've got listing presentations, and those all take priority, right? Because you've got to service your clients, but you should also make sure that you're taking future clientele and prospecting just as importantly as all of the uh, things that you're doing right now to transact with the day-to-day of your business. So your time blocking, simply, as I said, take one or two times throughout the week. I kind of encourage the mornings if you can, because I think sometimes time blocking in the afternoon can be a little bit harder, but it's up to you. So take two one-hour sessions throughout the week and see if you can block the time. And this means shutting down your phone, shutting down email and having a strategy or a focus on note cards, maybe sending out certain um, texts. So you can have your phone, but it's for the outreach. It's not for reacting to existing clients. And also maybe even just using this time to plan a little bit forward, maybe some client appreciation gifts, maybe a client appreciation party that you want to think about doing later in the summer or the early fall. Those are the types of things that take planning. But if we're always running uh, kind of by the seat of our pants, then we never get the chance to really sort of figure out and be a little bit more strategic in our business. So I want to encourage you this week, take a look at your schedule and see where can I time block and just make this a tiny habit. And you will see that if you continue to do it, it is going to create some momentum and future opportunity for you. And it's also going to allow you to feel as if you are controlling your business instead of, as many of you are feeling right now these days, that the business is controlling you. So give it a shot and let us know how it goes. Such a great tip, Amy, because uh, how often do we hear about time blocking? And we actually get sick of hearing about it, time block, but we have to do it like you're saying. So what a great tip. Uh, Speaking of this market running us, One of the things that I was talking with agents about over the weekend was exhaustion in working with buyers in trying to find properties. And so we totally get it. The market is crazy right now. We understand that things are moving really quickly and working with buyers 
can be frustrating when you're putting in offers, you're emotional, they're emotional. But here's a great point is that our clients feed off of us, right? So we set the tone and they look to us. Meaning if we escalate our emotions, if we're the ones that are always upset and stressed out, we actually create stress in our clients. So Ninja has a great analogy. It's called being the duck. And what does a duck do? On the surface of the water, a duck looks really calm, really cool, collected, but underneath they're paddling like crazy. And I love that analogy because that's how it should be with our clients where we're calm, cool, collected, but really we're working our butts off because at the end of the day, our clients don't care if we're exhausted, right? They're looking to either sell or buy or both. That's their goal. And when we start, if we start talking about how we're exhausted and so tired and frustrated and our emotions get the best of us, we're not making ourselves attractive to them. So here are just some quick phrases we can use when we're working with buyers. Now, this first one comes out of Fort Collins, Colorado, the home of Ninja. And this one is really talking about how when, uh, when you're first meeting with a buyer, setting the stage and maybe reminding them before you start looking at properties and saying, look, don't fall in love with a property until you're engaged. That means until you actually have an accepted offer. Sounds backwards, but in reality, we have a lot of people, a lot of internal or external tears happening because people are falling in love with properties that they were never meant to have. And on that point, there's another saying that uh, out there that goes like this, where it's, I never had a buyer lose a property that didn't find the actual right one for them. Meaning they ended up finding the perfect property for them, even though it took some time, even though they lost a few in the middle. And then, and also saying something with your buyers, like there will be laughs, we'll look at properties, there might be tears, hopefully not but we're gonna make sure we find you the right property. And it's setting expectations. It's similar to when I go golfing with somebody. I tell them, you'll see some great shots. You'll see some terrible shots, but we're gonna have a lot of fun. And that way they know what to expect. That's great advice, Kevin. And you made me laugh there when you talked a little bit about your golf game, because I think many of us who are golfers can all appreciate that. So let's talk about our sellers. Uh, Kevin did a great job kind of setting the tone or uh, focusing your mindset on how to approach your buyers. But let's talk about listings and sellers and the fact that we're trying to get inventory right now in this market where there are not homes for all of the buyers out there. And again, back to Kevin's point, we are tired. We're all tired right now. But the thing is, is that our clients don't totally care, right? Because they really are looking to us and how we're going to create success. So one of the things we want you to think about is the concept of the real estate review. As we're all trying to figure out if we can uncover new inventory that we can then bring to buyers who are in the marketplace, real estate reviews are a great way to do it. So don't overthink it though. Keep them really simple. This doesn't need to be an eight to 10 page comprehensive report. All you're really trying to do is create a review of the market that you can get in front of a current homeowner that might change their mindset and have them realize, wow, this could be a great time for me to sell in this marketplace. All you're wanting to do is put something in front of them that allows you to then have a dialogue and reach out with them and see if they wanna talk about their options. So what you can do is you can use our at property CMA tool, super easy to put together a very quick overview of the market. And if you're not necessarily using the at properties, the CMA, it's also easy to pull anything that you've got and that you're using to create a CMA in your marketplace. You can also use a tool like InfoSparks. That's also a really great way to show a potential seller what's going on in the market. When you show them things like month supply of inventory that's really low, or the fact that market time has been really quick, or you can show them that homes for sale are going down because there just aren't as many that are out there and closing. Those can be things that are put in front of a potential seller that makes them realize, hey, maybe I should be getting myself into the market. So here's what you need to do. Go ahead and figure out five to 10 people that you may want to target for a real estate review. And again, don't overthink it. Think about past clients. And I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be past clients that are five, 10, or 15 years in their home. You can even look at people who might have just recently sold 
in the last two, three or four years, because they might not necessarily love their house for life or their condo for life. And seeing the opportunity that's presented today, they may want to do something. So think about it. And then once you identify those five or 10 people, make a really easy real estate review, put it together. It shouldn't take you more than 10, 15 minutes and then get it out to them. Send it to them by email. You can also send it in the mail if you want to, but here's the key. Once you've sent it, you've got to follow up with a phone call, checking in, just saying, hey, there are a ton of people in your neighborhood or in your building that have been really interested in finding out what's going on in the market. And so I've been getting in contact with them and giving them this information. And so I thought about you and I thought maybe you would want to take a look at this as well in case you want to do something. This is a great market to sell in. And a lot of people who originally weren't thinking about doing anything once they take a look at what's happening, have changed their mind and have wanted or have been thinking about selling. So really easy for you to follow up with a quick dialogue, but this is a great way for you to start figuring out how can I uncover inventory in this market right now? So great, such a great tip for uncovering inventory. And if we could highlight anything that Amy said, it's keeping it simple, right? It's not this like she said, it's not an eight to 10 page report you're putting together. It's something you can do in five minutes. Love it. So let's close up with positivity. So we're busy. We talked about being exhausted. We talked about all these things. I want us to think about how powerful positivity is, but also how powerful negativity can be. So put yourself in your own shoes. You're excited about something. You had a great closing, a great experience. You just started working with a great client. And you start talking with a colleague or a friend or a family member, a partner, spouse, whomever, and they're complaining and they're complaining about their day. And it just seems like the sky is falling. Think about how the energy is completely sucked out of you when that happens. What happened to all of the positive energy and vibe that you had going because of that new client or because of that closing? It's gone. So when we talk about positivity... There's, there are always going to be things around us that want to pull us down. Negativity is very powerful. That's why commiserating in a group of people, all complaining, is it's contagious. Don't allow it to happen. One of the things I do it every morning is that when I get out of bed, uh, I swing my legs out and I put my feet on the floor. And no matter how much stress I'm feeling about whatever is coming that day or whatever meetings, conversation or coffee topics that we're going to be talking about, I put my feet on the floor and I say, today is going to be a great day. And I say it out loud and I believe it. I make sure that I believe it. And I'll tell you something as simple as that has a huge impact on how the day starts. So with that, be the positivity. We have a lot of things to complain about always, whether it's traffic, the fact that it's still cold in the middle of May, whatever it is, there's plenty to complain about. Let's focus on the positive. I love that, Kevin, because as we say, all of us ninjas, what you focus on expands, right? So I agree with you. There's mornings where I wake up and I feel like I'm the one that's going to have to set the tone for the day and start the positivity train. We were talking about this earlier, but don't wait for somebody else to throw in the positivity. You've got to be the one that starts your day out, however you need to do it, and then share the positivity because it's contagious. You can actually turn somebody's frame of mind around if you come in and have a great day, say something something wonderful to them and boom, all of a sudden they're going to pass it along. So give it a shot today. Oh, woo, woo. That's the positivity train, Amy. Yes. Great tip. Bring the positivity, be the positivity in the group. I love that. All right. So that's it for us today. Thank you for joining us for coffee. Refill yours if you need to, and we'll see you next week. But one quick reminder, Thursday, two days from now, May 13th, what's happening, Amy? That's right, Kevin. On the 13th, we have our first ever summit. We are super excited. So please make sure to tune in for the Opportunity Summit. It's this Thursday, starting at 9.15. So be there. There's a lot of great stuff and you don't want to miss out. That's right. So make today a great day and we'll see you Thursday morning, 9.15 a.m. Central. All right, team, we are going to see you on Thursday. Make it a great day. And remember, doot, doot. Woo, a woo, woo. A woo, woo. <laughs> woo, woo. I sound like a crazy person. Okay. <laughs>